What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and today I am looking ahead to one championships fight night 13, uh, which goes down over in the Lumpany Boxing Stadium um, on Friday night, um, August 4th, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern on U.S. and Canadian streaming. I was going to say TV on, uh, on Amazon Prime and... Um, I'm going to preview the card and look ahead to it, but before I get into that, maybe some news on uh, this sort of card and uh, what we have for one championship going forward, because there was an announcement this week that uh, one championship will be holding four events in US um, on US soil, I suppose, in 2024. Um, just looking at the article on Sherlock here, and they also said uh, the plans are to have 12 events on Amazon Prime in the US and Canada in 2024. So this is a, a brilliant big move forward again for one championship. Not you know sometimes it's easy to get those um, uh, deals with, with places like Amazon and. It's, it's absolutely not easy, but you get what I mean. But it's, what I mean is it's harder to keep them. You know, we've seen down through the years, different promotions being able to get on, you know, whether it's over here, maybe on a Sky or a BT or BBC or Channel 4 or, you know, over in America, whatever it might be, whether it's, you know, Fox or wherever. But to keep it and to consolidate it and go again straight away the, the year after is something that's not done an awful lot. And kudos to One Championship for that because, you know, I think most people... Um, have Amazon Prime, you know, for your deliveries or whatever you might have, and it's very convenient. And I think we've gone from a stage, you know, not to not to get a not to not to go modern on you here or anything, but from a few years ago, uh, where streaming was kind of it was too early for streaming, to now it's probably like now is the right time to be ha- having a deal like this and on a, a place like this. So one championship, I think, hit it at the right time. And the fact that they're going forward again is very, very good. And I, I also like as well the the fact that one championship have the the Lumpany cards and then they have their twelve, I suppose, big Amazon Prime cards here as well. And there's another few kind of thrown in the middle as well. I suppose we had the uh, um, uh, the, the heavyweight championship on the car, one of the Lumpany cards. So it's you, you, you kind of have to, to tune in for all of them. But I do like that. They have their big monthly card, or maybe even if it's not monthly, you know you're going to get the 12 a year, or maybe one or two more. And I like that. I like that they have, you know, these tint ball events. You know, Bellator are always talking about that. And so, you know, sometimes we kind of, it's hard to disassociate one event from the other. But I think one championship probably do that better than anyone else. And I, the fact that we're seeing 12 events and the four in the US coming up next year, I think it's, it's good news. And as well, the other part of it, um, with, I suppose, the turbulence in Bellator at the moment. Now, by the time this comes out, you know, maybe an announcement will be made or something. And I, we all know it's kind of it's coming at some stage. What's going to happen with PFL, with the Bellator turbulence, with PFL itself and all, you know, that's been going on there over the last while. Like, there is a massive fight at the moment for, let's say, the, the number two behind um, the UFC. But you know what else is there is? There's like, it feels like for a long time, in mixed martial arts, it was kind of a, a fight for survival. Um, but that doesn't really seem to be the case with one championship. And it doesn't seem to be the case, you know, on a kind of a long term one championship either, whether it's long term in the past or long term in the future, which is, is fantastic. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. And long may that continue. Because And look, long may that continue for Cage Warriors and for KSW and for PFL and for Bellator. Let's hope whatever happens with Bellator can keep Because it's nothing but good for everyone. The people get to watch it. Fighters get to fight in different places. Like someone asked me the other day about uh, Michael Villan Page. I'm like, I don't think he'll go to the UFC. If he did, it'd be absolutely fantastic. But they're like, where's, where's the one place you think he can go? And I was like... One championship seems to be like the, the place that I would probably pick out, which is a thing in the past that everyone would be like, do you have to see or no, or that's it, and there's nothing else about it. But now it's different. There are different options. And the fact now that one championship has uh, this deal into the next year is absolutely fantastic. Hopefully PFL will get a big deal. Hopefully Bellator, something happens to them, and they get a massive deal and everywhere else as well, because it's, 
it's nothing but good for MMA. It's nothing good for me here. It's nothing good for you here watching me and, and all the fighters and, and uh, the promotions as well. So that's uh, fantastic news out of one championship this um uh, this week and you can check it out it's on Sherdog.com as well uh, just go there's a, like a one championship tab on the front page and you'll be able to find it there um, so let's get to uh, this card I suppose um, it is uh, a very uh, uh, MMA kind of light card I suppose for one of their big cards it's probably the lightest there's only three MMA fights um on deck as I record here now, so, so you know sometimes things get moved around. I was re- I recorded a Bellator preview last week, and about an hour after it came out, half the fights had changed. So you never know in uh, in mixed martial arts. But um, there are, as I said, three MMA fights which I will talk about uh, at length in a minute. I'll actually the grappling match is a very interesting one as well. And I'll talk about that at length in a second, but. Uh, I reached out to my guy Harry, who uh, is my my kickboxing expert, and he threw me over a few lines on few a few of the kickboxing fights. So, um, just a, I suppose a quick run through the kickboxing and the Muay Thai that is going on on Friday night. First of all, we've uh, Rungawi against Truilo. Uh, Rungawi was uh, initially supposed to fight Liam Nolan on this card, uh, who just had a big win, but he uh, got an injury. Um, he got back-to-back wins, the Rungawi, on the uh, one fight series uh, and got himself a contract here. Uh, Truilo is filling in on short notice as well. He's a 33-year-old Spanish lightweight. I suppose a relative unknown, and maybe uh, Rungawi would be the favourite coming into this one. But, you know, with relative unknowns, there's a good way of getting known, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one in flyweight Muay Thai fight, Elias uh, Mohammadi against Edgar Tabares, who I know people will uh, have seen um, and heard of, uh, who is a bit of a wild card, I suppose, the first Mexican WC Muay Thai champion, uh, and he fought Rod Tang. Um, you know, Rod Tang came out after that, and I think you said he took it on, on two days notice, or no, uh, trained for two days after that, but still to get in there with Rod Tang. Um, I'm sure he'll want to get in there with him again. Um, and it look, it shows the quality to be able to, to, to be even match made against someone like that. Elias then, uh, he's two and two in his uh, four one championship fights. Um, last pass, uh, last fought against uh, Munkat Pet uh, to a majority decision loss. Uh, he's a very high level fighter, so uh, to get there, uh, w- you know, to that close to him is, is good, and to get a win here, ba- I would put him back uh, in the mixed. Um, then we have Taiwan Shai, who a guy who, um, and my pronunciations, I would like to apologize for him right in here. Uh, he's fighting David Kiria. Uh, uh, Tawancha, he's just so powerful. And I've watched a few of his uh, matches in in one championship. You know, I, I've I've been slowly getting into the the kickboxing and the might and the might I reluctantly, I suppose, getting in there over the last while. But it is it is pretty enjoyable. But he's an amazing striker, calm, very hard to read. Um, he's now, I suppose, the the might I champ, and he, he, you know, they want. Um, he wants, I think, to face one of the, the big boys next time out, whereas Alizav or Gregorian for the kickboxing title. So that'd be absolutely massive. And David then is, he's more of a kickboxer. Uh, and this is kickboxing as well. So he's coming over from the Mai Tai, obviously is a Taiwan Chai. Um, he hasn't put it together in one so far. He's only won one of his five fights, uh, but on, on the day, uh, he can do it. Interesting to see how to move over, I suppose, to the bigger gloves, the different uh, type of rule set works out for Taiwan Chai, but let's see how that, uh, I suppose, goes for him on uh, on Friday night. Uh, and in the one kickboxing uh, championship fight, the aforementioned uh, at Federer, um, Gregorian and Alazov, that's going to be an ap- absolute bonkers uh, in there. Alazov uh, lost his one debut, uh, but he's been unbelievable since. Became the first man to stop Sami Sana in 152 fights. Uh, defeated Sita Shaddai and then uh, stopped Superban and looked, you know, looked unreal before that. Um, it's a trilogy between the two of them. The last fought in 2013. Uh, at first in the no contest after spinning elbow from Alizov caught him. Gregorian won the rematch by unanimous decision. Gregorian has beaten uh, a lot of the big fighters in one. Is every chance uh, to, I suppose to take this one. Um, you know, Alizov mixes it up maybe a little bit better and it's an interesting one. Like, you'd want someone as a, a more higher level expert than uh, me at uh, <laughs> kickboxing to tell you who's going to win that one. this one has. But I think that will be... Um, 
I think that will be pretty good. And, you know, I, I think a lot of, uh, you know, kickboxing fans, Muay Thai fans have been very appreciative of what one have done over the last one. Not, to, I sound like I'm a one championship promoter here or something in the first 10 minutes of this video, but look, credits where credit's due. But I see a lot of those people, like even my guy, you know, who I've had on the few, uh, the show a few times and other people on Twitter who are big fans of it are, you know, they're, they're constantly saying about like one championship, we're kind of putting on these fights that we've always wanted, um, put on in the, uh, the stand up rules and fair play to them for doing that. Like fair play to them. Cause it's, we see it in boxing and we see it in MMA all the time it just doesn't happen as much as we would want it so congratulations and fair play to one championship for uh, you know putting their head above the parapet I suppose and, and doing that um, right the last contest I want to talk about before we get to the um, mixed martial arts is a grappling contest and that is between Jared Brooks and uh, Mikey Musumeci. Obviously, Jared Brooks is a 115-pound champion over at one championship, and uh, Mikey Musumeci is the, the grappling champion over there, uh, and they're meeting in a grappling match, which I just think is is really exciting. Like, I've watched all of Musumeci's last, what, four or five um, matches in one championship, and he's it's just really, he's odd and fun and different. And, you know, I, when I started watching MMA over, well, over a decade ago, I, I remember like, uh, I, I joke now about jujitsu not working in MMA, but I was a big fan of jujitsu and I was watching a lot of jujitsu and, you know, even watching MMA fighters in jujitsu matches, like, uh, that famous Diego Sanchez jujitsu match and many, many more. And, <sighs> I don't remember any jujitsu like this. You know, it was different. You know, people talk about like the Ten Planet and the, you know, the the rubber guard and all of that stuff. But like, he just he's a little bit different, and he's odd, and he's you know he's uh, a, a kind of a you know we we always heard in the early days of MMA oh, these guys are just like guys working in the office, and he, he looks like a nerd, but he'd absolutely kill you. And he's the personification of all of that, you know. And it's brilliant. I absolutely loved like. He's the type of guy you could show like a young lad who, you know, is at home and you want to get him out of the house or whatever. He's like, you can be like this guy. And he's, he is, um, yeah, he's brilliant. I love Mikey Musumeci. I love watching him compete. And, um, you know, he is, it's funny because this is like, he is the guy who's probably at home playing the Xbox or playing the PlayStation. And then, you know, he does this for an hour and night and then he goes back and does it. And the opposite end of that is Jar Brooks, who's probably like the massive jock, who's, you know, <laughs> doing his sports all the, uh, <laughs> you know, 24 hours a day, uh, was probably the popular guy in school and the quarterback of the team or whatever it might be, you know. Uh, although maybe he's a bit small for that being 150 pounds. But you get what I mean, you know, you get what I mean. It, feel, it just feels like they're that, those different characters. Now, maybe they aren't. Uh, I don't know too much about Jar Brooks apart from his brilliant fighting, but like... This is, I suppose, the workhorse wrestler against the jiu-jitsu whiz in a jiu-jitsu match. And, like, every one of Musumeci's recent matchups, and a lot, actually, of the one championship grappling has been jiu-jitsu whizzes against either tough wrestlers or sam uh, sambo artists, whatever it might be. And almost, well, in all of them, the jiu-jitsu expert has dominated. Um... But I wonder, will that be the case here? Um, you know, I've always, I've always talked about um, jujitsu guys coming up against against guys who have like um, the strength and conditioning base, the, the just the strength itself base, but the competition base as well that mixed martial artists have, like. I always give an example of let let's say let's say you're here in Europe, right? And you're a hundred and forty five pound jujitsu artist and you decide I'm gonna go for the Europeans or whatever and you're maybe a brown belt or a black belt or whatever, and next you go in, you're good. You you know, you're you're working your nine to five and you're training four or five times a week and it's brilliant and then you meet Mads Burnell in the final. What's what's gonna happen there? <laughs> like we know what's gonna happen there. Right, now not saying that Mike Musumeci is a full-time uh, jiu-jitsu artist and all, he takes it very seriously. But, I, you know, just by looking at them, they did, they're did. they a different sort of athlete. And I wonder, will that sort of athletic base give an advantage? Now, jiu-jitsu is supposed to be that, isn't it? It's supposed to be like, no, it won't give an advantage because this guy has the technique and this guy has the style to beat the other guy. But is that true? 
and I suppose that's the question. Like, I'm not going to give you any uh, jujitsu technical breakdown here or anything, but I leave it at that. Like the the athlete, the the guy who's unbelievable at controlling people against the jujitsu is who can win it. I'm actually really looking forward to that. To be honest, that might, that might be my most anticipated jujitsu match in in years. So I'm looking forward to it. I can't uh, I can't wait to see that. All right, let's talk about the mixed martial arts. Um, and there are three mixed martial arts fights in this, and they are damn good. They are very, very, very good. Um, let's talk about uh, the the main event first, and let's uh, in mixed martial arts anyway. John Lineker against uh, Jae Won Kim, and um, look, it's been an interesting time, I suppose, for both of them. Uh, we had John Lineker coming into one championship and going on that great run, beating Munin, uh, Gufarov, Beninyan, Worden, and then Bibiana Fernandez with that great knockout. And then we had, like, that weird no contests against Fabricio Andrade. We had the bad loss, I suppose, from the, the corner stoppage in the fourth round of the uh, of the rematch. And now he's coming back again, you know. I, I, did he retire after that? Or was everyone's, uh, there was probably talks of it anyway. Um, but now he comes back. And it's, what is it, five months later. So he hasn't been out of the cage that long at all. And, you know, one of, he, he facing one of the guys who, if you've been watching one championship, maybe along with these shows or anything over the last couple of years, he must be one of the fan favorites now, the fighting god. And Jay Wong Kim, um, as again, like he hasn't had the best run of it over the last few fights. He lost to Kang uh, Kai Tang, he lost to Shamil Gasanov, and no, I suppose who hasn't lost to Shamil Gasanov? Um, well, there's one, there's one, and one and only one answer to that, and that's Gary Tonham. But uh, and he lost a decision last time out uh, as well um, at the, the start of this year. But it's look, it's one of those matchups that if you watch these two guys, you kind of I think know what it's going to be. It's going to be someone getting knocked out here probably, and if they don't, it's going to be an all time war because both of these guys absolutely go at it you know um john lineker we've seen him down through the years just take take lads apart with his pressure and with his his massive shots and with his just pig-headed aggression which i absolutely love like the cisco rivera fight is one of my favorite fights of all time just absolute dogs of war the two of them going in there and you know he's for a smaller guy he's knocked so many people out like 17 knockouts and 35 fights is massive for um you know a guy who's probably a 125 or fighting down as uh at a lower weight and now it's kind of the you know the the um the, the 135 one championship weight which is kind of 145 so it's even you know, even more insane that he's uh he, he's still in that I suppose that conversation right now. Um and then Kim on the other side of it is it, I think he's a more technical fighter, you know, he's a lovely solid jab, he's very good footwork, great head movement, but it's all about the powerful right hand. Um he slept Martin Wynn with it. It can be taken down, good takedown defense at times, but I don't think John Lineker will be bothering him with our takedowns inside here. But um, what I really like about Kim, and there's a, you know, he's one of these guys, and it's a developing style, I think. And there's there's lots of fight, lads who fight like this in one championship and, and around the world in mixed martial arts, but he is that kind of draw you out and counter you type of fighter, but in a very, very brave sort of way. And. I, this is kind of, I suppose, the crux of this fight because he draws you out, I suppose, a step inside where most people try to draw most people out. So if you're, you know, let, let, you know, Conor McGregor is a good uh, example of a counter fighter, right? He has that big, long jab in front of him, waiting for someone to make a mistake, and then he, you know, we all remember the Chad Mendes big, long, straight left, or the big left, or, you know, I draw all the way and step back, land the counter, right, it's a kind of, a, it's a step outside, it's waiting for either you to step in, him to stun you, and then him to step in, whereas with Kim, he's kind of, doesn't need to take that step in, he's fighting inside there, and he's so brave, and look, that, uh, I mentioned earlier his great head movement. You have to have great head movement. Your head getting taken off <laughs> inside there, you know. So 
that's the type of fighter he is. He's going to stand in the pocket, wait for you to throw, dodge him, and then try to land himself. And, like, I've never seen a fighter stand in front of John Lineker and John Lineker not throw at him. So you have one guy who's trying to get someone to throw and another guy who's more than willing than any fighter in all time to throw. Um, someone's getting knocked out. <laughs> someone is getting knocked out. I, I, look, I think it'll probably be Lineker. I think uh, my pick is going to be Kim here. Um, it'll be interesting when the betting odds on the betting show this week. I will go through the betting odds on this as well. It'll be very interesting to see when they come out what the actual price of this is. But I like Kim in this fight and I do think... Um, I do think he will get the win there. Um, the other fight, uh, the, well, one of the other two fights going down here um, is actually a very interesting fight uh, at 145 um, as well between um, Mark uh, Sengau and uh, Enik Oriel Bacartu, whose name I can pronounce, uh, Argyll anyway, Argyll, they were calling him on the fight, but... Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of Mark. I'm a big fan of Mark. You know the the one thing I wrote down in my notes when I watched him, and if this is the third or fourth fight, I've um I obviously talked about with, with him, uh, and it's the team Lakai, the Red Shorts. He's only twenty one years of age, you know, and he is the next guy coming through. You know, he made his one championship debut in twenty twenty one, and he's what his fourth fight, uh, and has got stoppages in in all of the ones since, and looked really really good in all of those fights. Um. He's fast, he's confident, he throws, you know, when you wear those red shorts, what do you do? You throw, throw those turning kicks, big leg kicks, head kicks, body kicks, all of that, but he can wrestle as well, and he's absolutely relentless ground and pound. So this guy can fight all around. Um, Argeldin on the other side, uh, watching a bit of him, he is he's a talented guy, I, I'll be honest. Um, I, lo- I love... The way he throws his shots, uh, you know, he's fighting out of uh, he's fighting out of Mongolia, and he, you know he is there. I think they were calling him the Mongolian warrior, and like he fights like a Mongolian warrior, you know. He just bomb, 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 and then he try to take you down, like literally try to pick you up and take you down. He's uh, unbelievable. Like I, I, he throws like a guy who has unbelievable power. I don't know if he has the biggest power in the world, but. He almost bypasses that by throwing so much at you. The ground and pound again is absolutely vicious. And you know, he is, um, he's a funny record, I tell you. In some places it's different, in other places it's different. I think he's around 11 or 12 fights, but he's won. He, he lost two of his first three, I think. And he's won something like eight, seven, eight in a row. Um, he's fought on the road to one championship. He's fought in the one fight nights um, and all of that. So, um, I'm very interested to see him. And I watched uh, his last one championship fight is over on YouTube, or maybe it's the second last one. And his ability, I think, to kind of dip under his own shots when he's drawing lads in and get a big takedown is massive for him. And it's probably the way to victory here because uh, Mark is a a very, very good fighter and a very good wrestler on his own. I, I would struggle to see him getting on in, getting drawn into the type of boxing match that Argyle would want him to, to be drawn into or to draw, he draws other lads into. I think um, uh, Sanjay will will kind of use his footwork and step to each side and land the shots he needs to land to get away from him. So um, I like, my, my pick is Mark in this one to, to win the fight, uh, but I think it's it's a very interesting one. It's a, Like one championship seemed to have a lot of guys who are like, five to to 15 fights into their career who are like really good like Abdullayev a couple of weeks ago just this guy like one of the best prospects in the world I think he's brilliant absolutely brilliant and we see another uh, couple of very very good prospects here as well if you want to talk about prospects guys if you want to talk about prospects how about how about a couple of heavyweight prospects by god We've had everywhere prospects in this. Um, if people have watched my top five fights for the month of August, you'll have already heard me talking a little bit about this, but it is Marcus Almeida Bushesha against Umar Khan Rugrug. Rug. Uh, five and one for Rugrug Rug against four and all for Buchecha. Uh, four finishes for Buchecha. Uh, four finishes as well. For uh, for Rugrug, and this is 
And this is a fight I've wanted for a long time, to be honest. Like, we've all heard about Buchecha coming through, being this unbelievable jiu-jitsu black belt. And when he comes over to MMA, he's going to destroy everyone. And what has been promised has been delivered. He has destroyed absolutely everyone. It's a very good fit for him, I think. Two and one championship. They've given him some good guys, and he is absolutely. Uh, oh, and and oh, when I say good guys, good guys for a guy who's making his debut, and they've brought him up, and now they're giving him a test. The same for Rugrug. Like Rugrug got a test against Kirill Grishinko three fights into his career, four fights into his career, and like he wasn't able to pass it. Then he got another one uh, with um, Gazayev, who was a European champion, uh, in his next fight, and he was able to pass it, and he looked really good there. So. Buchecha, if you don't know, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion black belt, absolutely brilliant, massive athlete coming out of Brazil, and Rugrug is the Senegalese um, sand wrestling champion, I suppose you would call it, which is like, not just wrestling, but it's like, you know, um, kind of sambo on the sand, <laughs> like that. it's half wrestling, half fighting, and um, my guy Alan Murphy, who... Um, was working for he so he debuted in Aries did uh, the Rogue Rogue back in 2019 and Alan Murphy put up this great video about him and it went viral and everyone was talking about Rogue Rogue and then he goes in and destroys Sophie and Bakaju who's a good uh, I suppose journeyman heavyweight in 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 um, in Europe and he, he destroyed him um, but like that's I suppose where the legend of Rogue Rogue built we love that sort of character and that sort of story in mixed martial arts and you know. It's not just the character, not just the story. This guy can fight. This guy can wrestle. He's an absolute beast, like beast. Uh, but then we saw against Grishinko, I was like, well, is that going to be enough? Like when you come up against guys who are at that level. But, you know, he's been training, I know, out in the, out in the Middle East. Uh, I know John Mitchell, who's from Ireland here, uh, has been training out there too. And, you know, they, they've been in each other's corners and stuff. And, um, you know, I don't know who the coaches are out there and stuff, but if John Mitchell is with you, you know there's going to be good coaching and things are going to be done right. And he's improved. There's been no doubt about it. His hands have looked good. Uh, in his last few fights since, he's been more calm. And, like, what I think he needs to do is add a bit of that together, add a bit of the, the beast we saw in the first couple of fights with the calm assuredness and the extra technique that we've seen recently. Um, and as he goes forward, that's what we need. But what do we need here against Puchecha? I'm not sure, to be honest. Like, does he try to control him on the feet with that striking? He showed he's been able to do that. How good is Buchecha striking? We've seen bits and pieces of it, but not too much because he's just been destroying everyone recently. He's good on the ground outside of the submissions even. He's good at getting on top, good at getting that ground and pound. Um, so this is a tough matchup. Like you would think um, Rogue Rogue right, might want to take him down and dominate him from on top, but if he does that, like how good are his uh, leg lock? defensive maneuvers how good is his armbar defense how good is he against a world champion black belt that's sweeping like and how many people can you get the size of Rugrug or the size of Buchecha that you can train with with their qualities with their abilities to actually prepare for this fight as well I love this fight <laughs> I absolutely and utterly love this fight this is everything we want and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm mad for this fight. I think I might leave it at that because I don't know who's going to win. I genuinely don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of a soft spot for Rug Rug, but I like Bucheche as well. Um, I, uh, I just hope it doesn't turn into a bit of a kickboxing match. I hope uh, it will be a kickboxing match for a while. I think, but I hope it does hit the ground at least, at least once. If it, and if it doesn't get finished, maybe a couple more times throughout the fight as well. But this is. Absolute brilliance, and I cannot wait for this fight. I'm telling you, it's out of all those fights that are coming up in uh, in August. I think this is my most anticipated one, so cannot wait for that. All right, um, that is it for me. And a uh, short and sweet this week because we've only the three MMA fights, but we took you through some of the the kickboxing, the Muay Thai, and the um, uh, the news and the uh, uh, the grappling as well. So all is good. Thank you to everybody for watching. I appreciate it. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com. Enjoy the fights over one championship this week, and I'll see you all next time.